Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Olaf Catholic Church. Today, we ponder Jesus' resistance to deny his humanity on this first Sunday of Lent. A special welcome to all visitors among us. We also welcome all who are watching this liturgy via the live stream and the television broadcast. Our presider is Father Kevin Kenny. With respect for the celebration of the Mass, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices at this time. Please stand as we begin our liturgy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. As we gather, we are one, here present, television broadcast and live stream. We come on our Lenten journey, seeking God's mercy and forgiveness, knowing that the cloud, clouds of temptation continue to surround us, but it is with God's grace, mercy, and strength that we move through them into the love of Jesus Christ.
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ and by worthy conduct pursue their effects through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, this is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings so that the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. Oh, Lord, may 
make known to me, teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. <clears throat> Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to the spirits in prison who had once been disobedient while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now, it is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Lord, the Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. 
After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord. So we gather today, the first Sunday of Lent, in person, television broadcast, and live stream. We hear those words again if we heard them on Ash Wednesday as the ashes were placed on our foreheads. Repent and believe in the gospel. You and I know perhaps what repent means, to be sorry for our sinfulness to turn to the Lord and seek God's mercy and forgiveness, knowing that God is compassionate, full of mercy, willing to forgive. And then to believe in the gospel, which might seem like an awesome task, to believe in the gospel. And believing in the gospel leads us to the covenant that God has made with us covenant of life. That as we heard of the legend of the story of Noah, that after the flood, God made that covenant that never again would waters wipe away all of creation. That God patiently waited as Noah built the ark. And how much longer can God patiently wait? Is there an ark? being built today, an ark of a different kind, where we can go to seek solace, where we can go to find peace. Because you and I know that we are clouded by the storms of life around us. And we continually look for that bow in the sky, the bow in our hearts, the bow in our communities in our households, to find that peace that the presence of God is there even in the midst of the cloudiness that comes about us, the challenges, the struggles. And so our Lenten journey brings us to this point of recognizing that the waters of baptism that you and I were baptized with instilled the Holy Spirit in us to be able to live in that repentance, to live in believing in the gospel, knowing that the kingdom of God is at hand. Now is the time of fulfillment. So some of us have experienced many Lents, and some are just beginning to understand their Lenten journey. And so as we have decided what we want to do for Lent, Is it the same thing we do every year? And why would we do the same thing every year? Knowing that after Lent, we go right back to what we've given up. Why? Because it kept us from knowing God fully in our lives. So these 40 days in the desert where we have to deal with ourselves and look to reflect within, surely it might mean, oh yeah, I'm not going to eat chocolate all of Lent. But why? Because I love it. But what does that teach me? Do I put chocolate above God? (laughs) And so I'm going to put God here, but then once Lent's over, oops, here comes that chocolate again. And has it helped me grow in life? Well, surely we need those disciplines, whatever it is that we recognize clouds our life from coming closer to Jesus from putting Jesus, God, first in our life and loving our neighbor to keep that covenant that God has made with us. And so what is it? Perhaps, besides maybe giving up chocolate, I might decide to put something positive in my life because you and I know if it's a negative, we don't like doing it. But if we have to do it, 
we yearn even more. It's like the day of fasting, Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. Once I turned 59 and realized, hmm, I don't have to fast anymore. I wanted to fast. Why? Because it was a discipline. But when I had to fast, it was like, oh, I'm so hungry. What can I do? And isn't it where on every Friday during Lent you just crave a hamburger? Every other day of the week? No, it's not important. But it's something that we're told we can't do. So what do we want? We want to do it. And that's our psyche talking to us. But with God's grace in us then, well, maybe I'll just have a salad on Friday. Won't that be good? To look at something positive in a healthy way that's going to lift us up, that's going to bring us into life. And so Lent is a time for us to examine our lives. How are we living in the covenant that God has made with us as a people? Are we walking, knowing that the kingdom of God is at hand? Or what needs to change in the world? Just the release of the information. Right now, that two Burnsville police officers were shot and killed in an EMT this morning. That's why if you came by HCM, so you saw the activity going on over there. A celebratory parade. Somebody pulls out a gun and starts shooting. Where is our world turning to? What have we become? And how do you and I look at a situation like this and think, okay, in my Lenten journey, how can I make a difference in the world? Because I don't know about you, but I'm tired of turning on the news and seeing one man shot, two people dead, this and that, that. It's constant, constant, constant. And maybe that has always been happening. But we never knew about it as much as we do now because news travels so quickly. We're right on the scenes. But how are we connecting with that covenant that God says, I want you to live. I want you to have life. Choose life. Not death. Choose life. So how can our Lenten season bring life, not only within me, but to those around me. And maybe it is, yes, giving up gossiping. Maybe it is giving up talking bad about people and finding something good in the person who bugs me the most. And acknowledging that good to bring life to them and to me. To recognize that the season is a joyful season because as we experience the repent and believe in the gospel's ashes were put on our forehead, now we're heading to Pentecost. And we know that what Jesus did for us by his suffering and death has freed, of our, freed us of our sins and our baptisms have washed us, giving us the Holy Spirit who strengthens us against the temptations. But as Peter said, it didn't wash the dirt from our bodies. The dirt is still there. But it's the clear conscience, the clear conscience that we all desire, to know that we are living life as it is given to us. We are living life as God's love in today's world. We are living life not only for the betterment of me, but the betterment of the world around me. But yet greed and power, envy, jealousy, are what clouds us in life to only look within and desire for ourselves. But Lent draws that out of us as we too go into the desert, as we too are tempted by Satan and the wild beasts. But yet the angels are there to help us, to lift us up, to protect us as well. And so we needn't fear. We needn't put that heavy laden on ourselves in this Lenten season, but to be free, to be free of our sinfulness of the past, to be able to move forward, to repent and say, yes, Lord, I am sorry. Renew within me the spirit's of your love so that then yes I can believe in the gospel to believe in the gospel to see the kingdom of God is at hand even though it's clouded by our world situation today but the kingdom of God is there and you and I are participating in it here every time we receive the Eucharist where we take in the word 
we too can see that the kingdom of God is present in our lives and that joy that we receive to go forth into the world to bring the good news. And so what difference can you make this Lenten season, whether it be inwardly, whether it be within the family, the community, my workplace, my school? What is that difference that I can bring to bring that joy to others, to allow them to see through the clouds the light of God's love, the sacrifice Jesus made for us, so that we can, yes, keep that covenant of loving God with our whole heart being, and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, because we know that love of God that is within us is something to be shared and not to be kept secret. So let us pray for that strength. Let us pray for the healing. And let us pray that you and I can be witnesses during this Lenten season of what this season can be for us in a positive light, to bring life back, to be renewed in life, and to live our lives truly as sons and daughters of a loving God who desires to pour mercy upon us, to strengthen us, to live within the creation that God has given to us, to benefit not only ourselves, but everyone living in the world. And together, let us proclaim that in which we truly believe. I believe in one God. Confident in God's presence among creation, let us offer our prayers and petitions. That the leaders of God's people, especially our clergy here at St. Olaf, help us to make this Lent a time of renewal. We pray to the Lord. That countries continue to work at being good stewards of our land, water, and environment. We pray to the Lord. Envelop in your love all catechumens and candidates preparing to receive the sacraments of initiation this Easter. We pray to the Lord. That men and women in our armed forces be kept from harm and return home safely. 
We pray to the Lord. May the disciples of Jesus gathered here today remain faithful to our Lenten exercises and come to Easter with renewed hearts. We pray to the Lord. For those who are in need of God's healing, especially for Father Mark Wayman, and for those who are mentioned in our prayer ministry, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died, May they rest in the peace, joy, and glory of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. From the depths we call to you, Lord, hear our Merciful God, you care for us by your love and forgiveness. Grant these our prayers that our Lent may bring us nearer to you. We ask this through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives forever and ever.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the right disposition, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, Jesus consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal Feast. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost, and could not approach you. You loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for the sake, for our sake, to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant them by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one body and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope Bernard, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Olaf, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Jesus Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. It is at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching that we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And let us offer to one another a humble sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Renew now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Jesus Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today's announcements are Lenten's small faith-sharing groups are underway, but there is still room for you. Sign up online or use a paper registration form that you will find in the information racks in the vestibule. Help push back against the snow and cold by donating winter gear to Samaritan Ministry. We thank you for your support. Tomorrow, President's Day, we will have Mass at 7 a.m. and noon. The parish office will be closed all day, and the parish building will close following the noon Mass. The St. Olaf celebration continues this weekend with those who are of 51 to 60 years of age. We will continue this every month on the third weekend with a different decade of age groups. If you are between the age of 51 and 60, please stop by the special table in the Forlitty Gathering Room to receive a special treat and a gift after Mass. All of us are invited into the Forlitty Gathering Room as well to celebrate those who are 51 through 60 and to share in coffee and donuts as we continue to build community together. And we prayed for Father Wayman in today's intercessions. He will be having surgery tomorrow, another of his many that he's had. Please continue to pray for him and all those who have medical needs. He is unsure what his recovery will look like, but he's anticipating being out for a couple of weeks. So we thank you all for being here today with us, those of you here present, those joining us by live stream and our television broadcast. Reminder that there are pew cards in the pew that hold all of our Lenten services and opportunities for renewal during this Lenten time, as well as our Holy Week and Easter schedule. Please take one home with you. If you have not done so already, and those of you joining us by live stream or our television broadcast, you can find that information online. So again, we thank you all for being here today and let us continue to pray for the safety of all peoples that this Lenten journey may open for us. That bowl that God has given to us, recognizing God's covenant of love and peace and unity. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace and in the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.